Hey guys, welcome to TechFlow. Quite recently, all of my friends have been texting me saying, Alex, which MacBook should I buy? And it's a little bit weird because I wouldn't be expecting people to be buying MacBooks, but it's clear to see that people are absolutely loving this new Apple Silicon. They're obviously doing something right and it's hard to deny that. Weird things that are just disabled in macOS by default, or free apps that people just aren't aware of. And today, we're gonna make all of you aware of these things. My name's Alex, and welcome to TechFlow. Let's jump straight in. Most of the things you do on your Mac are in the vertical orientation. An example of this would be something like scrolling down a web page. Now, if you're using your dock, as you can see, I've got it open at the bottom here, it's eating into your valuable screen real estate. So what I like to do is right click on the dock, click on position on screen and have it either at the left or the right. And I personally prefer the left. Now we're gonna keep focused on the dock for a quick second because there's something that really bugs me and it's the amount of time it takes for the dock to appear. So I actually have the dock hidden and as you can see, as you drag your mouse over to the side of the screen, the dock then appears. But it takes a split second and it has this animation which is eating into your valuable time. Basically paste the command into your terminal window, smash enter, it's gonna flash for a quick second and then you're back to normal. You can now close your terminal window and what you're gonna notice is when you drag your mouse over to the dock, it will instantly appear without any slow or sluggish animations. And as soon as your mouse hits the side of the screen, it will appear just like that. Makes it super, super quick. Great for a power user. Don't worry, if you wanna go back to the original animation, I will also put the other terminal command in, paste that into your terminal, and then it will revert what we've just done. Now, as well as the dock, a lot of our time on a Mac is spent inside of the Finder. So there's a few things you can do inside of here to make your life inside of Finder that little bit easier. Go ahead and open it up and then go to your bar at the top, click Finder and then scroll down to Preferences. Now the main one here is clicking on sidebar. Surprisingly, a lot of people don't know about this. You can actually go ahead and choose the individual things that will appear in the side of the sidebar. The dreaded one that I always like to get rid of that is enabled by default for some reason is the recents tab. I hate this thing with a passion, get rid of it. And also get rid of airdrop, even if you use it because I'll show you another airdrop hack a little bit later. Now anybody would think that all of the settings for Finder would be inside of Finder finder preferences, but annoyingly they're not. There is another one that I like to change. If you go to the advanced tab and click on show all file names, this is good for if you are in spotlight search, for example, and you type in terminal or anything, it will tell you whether it's an app or whatever type of file it is, whether it's an MP3 or a JPEG, just useful information to see. But let's go ahead and close out of finder preferences and we can change some more settings by right clicking on the top of our finder and clicking on customize toolbar. Now you have obviously all of these here, which you can basically click and drag to the top of your finder, but I like mine laid out like this. I have the new airdrop here, which is absolutely awesome, instead of having it down the left-hand side. Now the way this works is, and I'll click on pictures just for an example, if I go ahead and click on this Lightroom thing here, as you can see, the airdrop has now lit up. I can then click that, and it will then show me all of the nearby devices that will accept this airdrop file. Now something else that's disabled by default on all Macs and something that I get great use of is the view options. So with Finder open, go up to the top bar, click on view, and I like to have show status bar enabled, and I also like to have show path bar enabled. Now as you can see, this basically at a glance shows you where you are in your Mac in the midst of all the folders that you are in. So you can instantly go back, or you can even click on these to quickly jump back to folders that you are previously in. And the view options is basically this at the bottom. It shows you how much space you've got available and how many items are currently in the folder that you're viewing. And a little bonus Easter egg is that it also gives you a readily available icon slider so you can simply make things bigger or smaller should you be struggling to see things in the current folder. Now whilst you're on your Mac, you'll probably be spending a little bit of time in the settings. So it's best that we make it really easy to navigate. Let's go ahead and open settings here and see what this looks like. There's a load of stuff in here which I will barely ever use. Things like wallet and Apple Pay, extensions and screen time. 
There's things that I do use though, like sound, Bluetooth, and network. So we can go ahead and choose what this displays. With system preferences open, go up to the top bar, click on view, and then click on customize. You can then go ahead and uncheck all of the things that you aren't going to use to make your, well, your settings experience that little bit more streamlined. And again, this is all personal stuff that you can decide what you want enabled. Now, the one thing I've grown to love being an Apple user is their keychain access, which is basically Apple's built-in password manager. But the main problem with this is if you use devices like me other than Apple devices, i.e. a gaming laptop, gaming computer, or an Android phone or tablet, the keychain things will not sync across to these devices, obviously. Now, for the last sort of five or six years, I've been using 1Password, which has been great, but just not good enough. Every time I open it on my Windows PC, it asks me to pay for it, and it doesn't sync across all of my passwords as I update and change them. If I want them to sync to my PC, I have to export them from my Mac and then put them on the PC. A really less than stellar experience. But I found this service called Roboform, and it works really, really well across all of your devices. Now, they do have a free version, however, I've got RoboForm everywhere, which is £19 a year. Basically, that means it's gonna work across all of your devices. So it has an app on things like your mobile device, but on your web browsers, it's not an app on your computer per se, it's actually built in as an extension that works with all of the browsers. So in my case, I've got Chrome open here. And if I go ahead and click on the extensions, you can see here my RoboForm password manager. And if I open it, it's gonna go ahead and load me up all of my passwords. Now, the one thing that I found really useful with this is that it let me import all of my old passwords from my previous password manager. I just exported them and then imported them and they were all there like that. And it has a handy search up here at the top. So if I wanted to find my Amazon login, I just go Amazon and as you can see, it brings it straight up there. I can click on it and view all of the information and it will also load up Amazon for me. And there you go, it's logged me in just like that. And something that's really useful for us here at TechFlow, we have a couple of shared folders inside of RoboForm. And a few people have access to those shared folders, so therefore we can all share access to things like the joint TechFlow account and our Adobe Cloud account, so we always remember our passwords. You can add your team to this and share the passwords and accounts that you want to share. Now, if you do want to save yourself a little bit of extra cash, they do offer a family pack, which basically gives you five separate users on the same account for the small price of £38 per year. Put all the links for you guys down there in the description. Okay, so let's move back to the dock. Now, another one that I always tell people, and when I actually tell them, they say, I wish I knew about this sooner, it's dock spaces. You can actually put spaces in your dock. I can't believe nobody knows this. Now it's another terminal command, so go ahead, click command space and type in terminal to open up terminal. Now there's two commands that we need to enter to get our dock space inside of our dock. The first one, I'm just gonna paste like this. Now, like I've already mentioned, all of these things are in the description for you guys to copy and paste. And basically this is gonna give us our dock spacer. Once you've pasted this, click return or enter. And then the second command that we need to put in, I'm just gonna type it out and you can too, because it's super easy. It's just kill all, no spaces, then a space, and then a capital D for dock. Smash enter and you'll see that everything will refresh. And now if we go over to our dock, you'll see that, oh, what's that down here? we have a spacer, which we can freely move all around our dock to separate all of our icons. Look at that. Now you're probably thinking, Alex, I'm done with my spacer. I don't want it anymore. How do I get rid of that ugly thing inside of my dock? Well, it just behaves like a normal app icon. You can click it, drag it out here, and click remove from dock. Simple as that. Now, something else that I find really useful is a feature called Hot Corners, and this is baked into basically every Mac OS device. To find it, it's a bit weird. You have to go over to Settings, and then in, for some reason, Desktop and Screensaver. And then, look, you can see it's hidden down here called Hot Corners, or simply, if you're back on the Settings, you can just type in Hot Corners, and it will bring it right up. Now these four arrows are corresponding to each corner of your monitor. So what this is gonna do, if I drag down into my bottom left, it's gonna show my desktop. So let's say for example, 
I've got a Chrome window open. Just like this, okay, you can see I'm on Google. I'm gonna take my mouse cursor, go into the bottom right, and as you can see, it reveals my desktop. Now, there are plenty of things you can customize and choose to your liking. You can do a quick note, you can get it to show the desktop, do mission control, start the screensaver. Now, I've just set my top right-hand corner to launch Launchpad, so should I go up in the top corner, as you can see, my apps launch straight away. Super, super easy little hack that barely anybody knows about. Now, whilst we're inside of desktop and screensaver inside of the Mac settings, something else people don't know about is that you can actually dynamically change your wallpaper on a specific time or day. So if I click on desktop right here, you can see that what I've gone ahead and done is just imported here a folder called patterns. And this has got all of my favorite patterns in of wallpapers. And I actually have these readily available. If you guys wanna go and download them, I'll put the links in the description. But as you can see, there's a few different patterns in here and I have this to change picture turned on and I have this set to every day. Now you can literally go down to every five seconds if you would like to and then let's just for the sake of it wait five seconds and as you can see, it's changed it just like that. That's slightly jarring for me. I like it to change every day just so it feels like my MacBook is fresh every morning when I wake up. Now, have you ever been running out of space on your Mac and wondered what is taking up all of that space and you've gone through all of your files and you just can't see what is on your laptop that is making the hard drive space full? Now, I'm using a program here called Clean My Mac X. This isn't sponsored. I've actually bought this piece of software. However, there are lots of different pieces of software that basically do exactly the same thing. In this program, in Clean My Mac, they call it Space Lens. So I'm gonna show you how this works. And like I said, I'll put some free variants for you guys in the description. But what it's gonna go ahead and do is scan your entire hard drive and build a storage map so you can see where the largest files are. And there we go. So now we can see in size order the locations of the biggest files on my Mac. So for the sake of it, let's just go and see what is the biggest file on my Mac. So it's in the users folder, 795 gig. It's in my Mars Media folder. It's my pictures, apparently. Apparently in my photo library, my iCloud photo library, is what is sucking up almost a quarter of my entire one terabyte of space. Now, how easy was that to find out instead of me frantically looking through my finder, trying to, and clicking on everything to see how big the files are? That has made it super, super easy. Now the screenshotting feature on a Mac is absolutely amazing. It's far better than it is on Windows. You simply click Shift, Command, and then four, and then that gives you this little tool that you can go ahead and drag wherever you would like to take a screenshot. And as you can see, that has now appeared on the desktop. Now I was using that for years until I discovered an app called Shotter. Let me open it right here. And as you can see, this is a little application that sits up here in your menu bar and it's basically screenshots on steroids. So let me explain. If you're really awful at remembering the keyboard shortcuts, you can just click on the little icon here and then you get all of these options. Capture screen, capture area, scrolling capture, which is something that you currently can't do with Mac OS capture. And it can also recognize text and QR codes. So what I'm gonna go ahead and do here is pull up a little bit of text so we can have a play with this. So I'm gonna go ahead here and take a screenshot of my Amazon homepage. And as you can see, just like that, it's brought it to my desktop, super, super easy. Now before exporting this as a file, we have a few options to tinker and tamper with it. So let's say I was gonna share this on my Twitter, for example, I wouldn't want my address or the start of my postcode to be in this post. So all I need to do, if that's the case, is go up to here, click on blur and erase, and then go ahead and draw a box around there, and bash, as you can see, that is now blurred out, and I can share away without worry of leaking my own address. Even though that's not my address, so you've got no need to worry. You can also do really cool things like annotate it. So if I was trying to show somebody on this screenshot that they needed to buy this phone holder, for example, I could just draw an arrow like that. I mean, I've not done that very well. And move it there like that and say, okay, you can buy this one. You can go ahead and change things as well, like the size of it, the thickness of it, and then you can go ahead and click save. It's just a much better, well thought out way of doing screenshots. And as you can see, it's plonked it right on my desktop and there you are. The address is blurred out and there's an arrow 
arrow there pointing to whatever I'm trying to show off. So there you guys have it. Those are a few of my favorite Mac apps, tips, and accessories that I would always install and use on any brand new Mac. It's blown me away when I've been showing these things to my close friends and they were like, Alex, I literally had no idea. It's just things I've been doing for absolutely years, so happy to share them with you guys. Anyway, my name's been Alex, this has been Techflow, and I'll see you in the next one. Peace.